Takže dámy a pánové, milí přátelé, dobré ráno nebo dobré dopoledne, to je podle toho, jak vnímáte tento, tento čas. Dovolte mi přivítat vás na docela i pro mě neobvyklém a mimořádně příjemném setkání, které je nadepsáno Sdílejme zkušenosti, které pomáhají. Je to setkání, které je o tématu, o kterém vy víte mnohem víc než já, takže já slibuju, že i když jako moderátor obvykle do všeho mám tendenci mluvit výrazně, tak budu tentokrát mluvit výrazně méně než obvykle, budu se spíš jenom tak lehce ptát a, a pak samozřejmě budu rád, když se vy osobně zapojíte. Jsem nesmírně rád, že mezi námi je člověk, který ve svém oboru patří mezi absolutní světovou špičku, ale opravdu absolutní světovou špičku a navíc je to člověk, který v oboru, který vy znáte, má svoje velmi bohaté zkušenosti. Jsem velice rád, že je mezi námi světoznámý golfista pan Ernie Els. Vítejte. Po jeho pravici sedí dáma, která má s autismem v rodině své zkušenosti, což je konec konců případ všech, všech účastníků tohoto setkání. Zakladatel kanadačního fondu Autalk Kateřina Sokolová. Vítám vás. A konečně je tady ředitel řízení letového provozu, pan Jan Klas. Prosím, dobrý den. Tak. Já se jmenuji Jakub Železný a mým úkolem tady opravdu dneska je jenom předávat slovo a trošku hlídat čas, tak doufám, že se nám to, že se nám to podaří. Ernie, if you don't mind, uh, could, you please, uh, could you please explain us your connection to autism? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yes, so I'm from uh, South Africa originally and um, we lived in England uh, for uh, quite a while. Uh, because I play golf, I need to be uh, central, so we lived in, in London. Uh, for a bit. Um, so we moved to London and we uh, started a family, myself and my wife. My wife is flying in the, this afternoon to, to Prague uh, and my daughter who is 20 years old. Um, but we, we started a family in 1999. My, my daughter is 20 years old now, obviously. And um, then uh, we always wanted to have uh, three or four kids. So we um, Our second child uh, was Ben. Ben was born in 2002 in, in London. And, um, you know, it, it was kind of uh, ironic that in 2002 I won a major championship uh, in golf. It's, it's a big thing. I won the British Open um, for my third major. Uh, my wife was very pregnant when, um, when I won that event. And Ben, uh, our second child, was born in uh, 2002 in October, uh, the 6th. And um, I was actually at the birth of both of our uh, children. Um, birth was, uh, both times, was very natural. Um, but soon we, we realized, uh, you know, Ben's uh, uh, behavioral, um, it wasn't quite the same um, as Samantha, um, our daughter at about the same age, uh, around about two or three. Um, also, Ben looked a little bit different than Samantha, and I, we thought it was just the, the boy thing. You know, his, his, his head was a little bit bigger. <laughs> He was a big boy. Um, but around two or three, we could, uh, we could sense that, um, you know, he was a little bit slower than Samantha. For instance, uh, he didn't walk, uh, he didn't even try and walk around uh, one years of age to even 18 months of years of age. Uh, he didn't really crawl um, and uh, the, the contact was, was very different from uh, what Samantha was, uh, was doing at that same age. So, you know, we, um, we didn't quite know what to do. We started getting on uh, the uh, in internet To, to, to look at different uh, scenarios of uh, what might be going on. We started looking and uh, going around London to some, um, some doctors and so forth, and they said, no, he's just a little bit slow, um, and so on, so on. So, uh, you know, uh, as time went on, we got a little bit more, uh, more nervous, a little bit more, 
uh, we were a little bit mo more confused, to be honest. And um, then finally, we found uh, the autism uh, website. So uh, we looked at all the different um, um, uh, ways of, uh, of what people describe autism uh, was all about. And we almost self-diagnosed Ben, you know, at, at a very early stage. Uh, until we found more uh, people, more in the expert field, in the field that's more expert uh, for um, in that world. So um, that's how we basically diagnosed our son uh, to being autistic. As it turns out, um, you know, we can talk about it through this morning, but um, he's 17 years old. He's going to be 17 in October. Um, He's, uh, he's quite severe in the world of autism. He's, uh, he's not very verbal. Um, we, we keep working with, with Ben. Um, he's got the most gracious attitude towards life. He's very happy. Um, we try to live in his world instead of pulling him into our world. Uh, we've really um, seen what makes him tick, what what his perfect day is all about, and we try and uh, go uh, accordingly. Um, he's got a great um, uh, a life. We've, uh, in, in the last 10, 10 years, uh, 15 years, uh, we've built a center in Florida, the USA. We actually moved our family to the USA from England. Um, because luckily, my job, I can play all around the world. So. We moved from London to USA because we felt there was better treatment uh, for Ben at that early stage. Um, but even at that early stage in uh, the US, he was in a school that wasn't purposely built for autistic children, and especially for our boy Ben. Um, the school that we that he was in. Was a, uh, was a building that was uh, renovated and made into an autistic school. It was a commercial building. So these kids, I felt, were stuck into a building that they weren't really happy in the environment in any case, you know. Although it was much better than England, we didn't feel like it was purposely built for, for autism. Uh, for instance, uh, it was very dark inside, the, the windows were small. He didn't get a lot of sunlight, all the kids. Um, he still didn't want to go to school. It was a struggle every day for Ben to go to school. It was very unhappy, but it was much better than uh, we had in England. So we decided to build a school. Um, we bought a piece of land in Jupiter, Florida. And, uh, you know, we, we started fundraising and we, we built a school. And, uh, Today we have uh, capacity for 300 kids at the school. We have 257 kids, uh, all autistic kids, uh, at our school, and it's it's basically more a um, it's built more like a university for autistic kids. We got all the best people around the, uh, in the U.S. Uh, to help us build the school with the proper um, windows, sunlight, uh, classrooms. Uh, uh, soundproof. We've uh, we've got um, you know international satellite system in the school, so you can, as we sit here today, you can actually zoom into our school and see how our kids uh, are getting taught at, at different classrooms. We've got kids from three years of age to 21 um, at our center, and um, today Ben cannot wait to go to school. He's the most happy person you've ever met in your life. You know, he's with his, his, own, uh, his own people, uh, meaning he's with his autistic friends. And he's got activities from 7.30 in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon when he, when he comes home, almost like a normal school child. So um, we've come a very, very long way. Um, I don't regard myself as an expert in autism. But I'm a parent, and um, whoever's parents here this morning will know what I'm talking about. You know, you can have people 
try and tell you how to, to raise your kid, but if you don't have a kid with autism, you don't really understand uh, you know, what you're dealing with. So, um, and they're all very different. Um, in our case, uh, we're, very, we're very fortunate. We've got a happy child. Um, we have a lot of laughter in our, in our house. Um, he's got great friends. He loves coming with me on the golf course when I play golf. Um, he loves swimming. Um, he loves outdoor. He loves horse riding. Um, he's just he's, he's different than us, but in his world, he's, uh, he's perfect. So, um, you know, that's my, that's my story. Thank you very much <laughs> for your story. Thank you very much for sharing the experiences. Uh, I'll have some, some questions uh, later, but let me ask Kateřina. Kateřino, jak byste se dostala k autismu? Prosím, jenom si od erního mikrofon, máme jich málo. Děkuji. Dobrý den všem, tak vlastně mě k autismu přivedla rodinná zkušenost, protože můj bráška Radovan trpí těžkou formou autismu a právě z tohoto důvodu jsme se společně s mým tátou Janem Sokolem, který tady dneska sedí taky s náma, rozhodli, že založíme nadační fond. Rozhodli jsme se, že ho založíme z toho důvodu, protože opravdu víme, co ta péče o autistu obnáší, víme, jak to je náročné pro všechny zúčastněné a vzhledem k mojí pozici jakožto bývalé mis a modelky, tak jsem možná měla možnost to téma trošičku víc viditelnit, měla jsem možnost dostat se k určitým kontaktům a proto jsme téměř před čtyřmi lety založili nadační fond OutTalk. Out od slova autismus a talk jako mluvit, takže pojďme mluvit o autismu. A naším cílem je podporovat rodiny pečující autisty. V podstatě zaměřujeme se na několik form podpory. A to je přímá finanční podpora rodin, taky organizujeme různá setkávání pro pečující rodiče. V rámci těch setkávání zveme různé odborníky na autismus. Také máme v rámci našich webových stránek informační a diskuzní fóra protože si myslíme, že právě to sdílení informací je velmi důležité. Já vám do toho malinko jenom stoupím, když Ernie říkal, že není odborník na autismus, ale že je, že je rodič autistického dítěte. Tak já mám pocit, že to je vlastně ta možná nejlepší forma odbornosti, protože tam je ta zkušenost, tam je, tam je ta znalost té problematiky asi největší. Předpokládám tedy. Přesně tak. Já bych řekla, že já to mám trošičku podobně. V podstatě já nejsem rozhodně odborník na autismus, jsem v podstatě jenom sestra, která to vidí z té pozice sourozence a která vidí v podstatě, jaké to pro tu rodinu je. Takže, takže tak. Dobře. Jestli si předáte mikrofon s panem ředitelem, a pane řediteli, i vás poprosím, abyste se vyznal z toho, proč řízení letového provozu pod vaším vedením je vlastně partnerem tohoto semináře, stejně tak těm ostatním samozřejmě velice děkujeme, ale vy jste tady jako ten nejdůležitější partner, tak je to teď na vás. Tak děkuji za slovo, dobrý den všem. Tak já, kdybych tu svoji story začal, tak bude velmi podobná tomu, co Erný prožil, akorát to bylo o deset let dříve, což vlastně spadlo do roku 89, kdy... Nejenom teda, že nebyl internet, aby jsme se podívali na to, co naší dceři je, ale taky vlastně byl přechod od systému nesvobodného ke svobodnému, což se sebou přinášelo vlastně dvě věci. Jedna věc je, že byla možnost začít něco budovat, ten přístup k informacím se otevřel, na druhou stranu ten systém byl zcela v plenkách, chyběli odborníci, chyběli všichni profesionálové v tomto oboru, to dnešní setkání bych řekl, že je i taková podsta mnoha lidem v této místnosti, kteří se podíleli na budování toho systému, protože v tom začátku my jsme opravdu, to nebyla ta role rodičů a expertů na jedné straně, ale museli jsme trošku i, i nahrazovat často ty experty a ten systém se budoval od začátku. Proto je pro mě zajímavé slyšet i tu zkušenost, jak to funguje ve světě. Já vím, že vy děláte projekty i v různých zemích a ten mix toho, co dělá stát, co dělají samozprávy a co pak dělají ta non-profitní organizace, je určitě v každé zemi jiný a bude velmi zajímavé si tuhle zkušenost taky, taky tady sdílet. Jinak možná ještě jedna paralela. Já jsem vlastně v dobách, kdy jsme dceru vychovávali s mojí první ženou Jitkou, tak dělal práci dispečera, což je považováno za jednu z nejnáročnějších. Takže jsem měl souběh těchto profesí a protože vy máte vlastně souběh golfu, 
a, a výchovy, tak to je, já jsem golf v té době nepovažoval za nic náročného mentálně, ale protože jsem začal hrát, tak dneska už vím, že to je o té mentální přípravě, takže možná tady taky ta paralela trošku i s tím, že souběh těchto činností taky vyžaduje, bych řekl, velké nasazení. A vy jste elegantně ale obešel to, že také, že také jste založil nějaké zařízení? My tak jsme, to neobcházejte, my jsme vlastně prosím. V rámci toho budování systému jsme za, leco zažili, my jsme vlastně pomáhali vybudovat speciální třídy, jsou tady zástupci mnoha organizací, které znám. Autistik byl na začátku jako jeden z prvních, který vůbec tady propagoval autismus. Byla možnost zvát různé odborníky, ale řada rodičů skutečně i překládala texty, pomáhala s čím se dalo a do dneška s mojí první ženou Jitkou provozujeme chráněné bydlení, které bych řekl, že je takovým příkladem, jak má vypadat péče o autisty dospělé. Děkuji. Prosím, vraťte mikrofon Ernímu a já asi poprosím technika, jestli bych nakonec přece jenom mohl použít ten hlavový mikrofon, který sice nesnáším, ale abychom to tady nešerovali. Aby to bylo jednodušší, tak omlouvám se, že jsem si to neřekl rovnou. A já obvykle se technikům neomlouvám, spíš jsem ani přísný, tak teď se omlouvám. Tak, uh, Ernie, if you don't mind, uh, you've been talking about about the building of the school or about founding the school. Uh, uh, it sounds very easy, but I'm sure it was not easy. Uh, how hard was it? How hard was it to to communicate with with authorities? How hard was to find the uh, the proper the real the real teachers because uh, the attitude to autistic kids must be must be special. So could you tell us please more about uh, about uh, about this this process? Yeah, I know it was a it's a huge project. You know, um, at first we wanted to um, I wanted to get into the science of uh, of autism of what what causes autism why did do, why does autism happen um, and so forth as we uh, went through those kind of layers uh, we found out that there were quite a f significant group of people especially in the US that uh, that's in that field uh, of trying to find out what is going on uh, in the world if there is anything in the world going on whether it's because of our new world situation you know with communication foods that we eat uh, what's going on in the air and so forth there are people out there in the u.s um, with huge foundations we found that especially in new york you know obviously it's the biggest capital of money um, center in the in, in the universe uh, we've met we met with a lot of people in new york um, Uh, from the Simons Institute uh, to, to many other foundations that there are people in place um, that is um, trying to find out scientifically what's going on in our world, why autism is, is, is happening and why is, it seems like it's growing. You know, there's bigger numbers um, happening. You know, at the moment I think there's um, one out of every 70 kids born in the US has got autism. You know, it's, uh, it's it, of of of, um, of male kids born in in the U.S. Uh, one in seventy's got autism. So it's it's amazing numbers uh, coming through. So I was uh, diverted into, uh, f especially with my wife. You know, I wish you could meet my wife, but she's on her way. Yeah, she's um, she's the one that really started driving me um, towards getting something built. Uh, purposely built, as I said, for our son Ben, and then from the community where we live in Florida. We live in a small seaside community in Florida on the East Coast, uh, just above Palm Beach. Um, so uh, we've been there for, for a while. Uh, but to buy land in Palm Beach is very expensive. Um, so we looked around and we found a, a parcel of land. Um, Quite a few acres. We got. We found 20 acres in in Palm Beach, and um, and then the process of building the school started. And as I said, we wanted to build something that was purpose for. The, the purpose was to really build something special, uh, like nothing's been seen before in uh, in the autistic world. And um, I wish I had a slideshow here, but. Um, If you go onto the website, you know, you go into uh, my website, ernieals.com, and go into our autism um, side of the website, you'll find us. And you can check out the school. Um, but we took a lot of advice, obviously, from the, 
from the best people around the world and um, even our builders, the builders that built our facility is part of our foundation. Um, so, to, you know, to start from the beginning, we started a foundation. Um, first, we had to start, uh, you know, raising funds uh, for the school. And through golf, I'm quite well known, um, you know, in the U.S. and, um, and so forth. We, we started doing it through golf. We started doing golf tournaments. Um, we started a golf events program. Um, so everything at, at the start was all about me playing golf and inviting people to play golf and telling them about our story. It was very difficult at first because people uh, have stories to tell and have uh, fantasies of things. Uh, so I felt for a while we were just telling them about a plan and we never really got something in the ground. So it was a lot of pressure on, on everybody uh, to speed things up and to get things in the ground. So we did that after you know, two years of fundraising. We still fundraise. Um, we've raised over $50 million you know, in the US. So it's a big project. Uh, we're in the process now of, keep, uh, of keeping the, 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 the wheels going. We've got the pool coming in. That's our project. I still want to do the track and field in the back. Uh, we've got the tennis courts up. I've got a little golf facility uh, at the back for the kids where we do clinics and we do outdoor activities. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Ernie, and what, what about finding the right people to, to work there, uh, the school, I mean? I, I oh, think it, it must I'm be sorry. Very, it must be very hard. Yes, I mean, there's, there's a lot of uh, people um, that teach in different facilities around uh, the U.S. Mm -hmm. And when I saw our facility, they were standing in queue to come uh, mm -hmm. and teach uh, at our facility because it's, it was a proper classroom. Uh, it was set up properly. Um, we brought in uh, Marlene Satello, who runs our school. The staff in our uh, facility was handpicked mm -hmm. around the country, around the world. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all people that are experts in the field of um, teaching autistic kids and um, having programs, different <laughs> programs where it's verbal programs, we've got music studios, um, you know, we've got sports activities, we've got uh, all kinds of um, people in their respective fields that are, uh, that are very good. Uh, Jan was talking about his experience uh, during his uh, air traffic controller uh, job, that it was very hard to concentrate on this extremely hard job on one side, and on the other side, you know, I have uh, seriously ill uh, kid at home. Uh, what is your experience? I mean, I mean, concentration on golf, it's something very specific. Yeah. And to think about golf, and to think about Ben, and to think about your school, it must be, it must be a big mixture of, of feeling, um, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean... I'm sorry, it's, it's, maybe, maybe it's, it's too you, personal a question, but... Uh, no, 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 absolutely. This is the questions you have to ask, because it's such a personal thing. Um, it's not something that you want to share too mm -hmm. much and that um, that was one of the reasons why we went public with our situation. Uh, we went public with our situation in 2007, 2008, around there. So Ben and was about five or six years? Ben was just uh, five years, six mm -hmm. years old, yeah, mm -hmm. five years. And uh, obviously then you understand, well we understood a bit more about autism and as a male parent, uh, from the male side, it was uh, it was something to get uh, over, you know, emotionally, you know, and and being quite well known, you know, in the golfing world, um, you know, the only organisation we ever knew about was Autism Speaks, which is a very public uh, organisation in the US. They do a lot of public stuff, um, but nobody privately really of who was well known ever said, hey, you know, we, we, we are a family with autism. Uh, because I felt that people held that back of try to, um, um, you know, keep it private. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I spoke out, I cannot tell you how many emails we got from all around the country, all around the world. It was like, wow, I didn't know you have autism in your family. And you speak about it. We said, yeah, you know, we're a very normal family. Um, 
with a very normal autistic kid, you know. But it's 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 um, you will know. Your parents will know what we're talking about because to take an autistic kid into this room, you know, immediately there's a change because the behavior is very different from mm. our behavior. So all of a sudden. People look around. They go, "What's what's going on? Is your child mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. naughty? Mm -hmm. your, your child mm -hmm. is. You must t teach your child manners." Mm -hmm. You say, "No, my kid's got autism." So people got no idea um, about autism. So then, families stay away because you you don't want to upset other people. Mm -hmm. you, you you get on an airplane. I mean, our kid, our, my um, I wasn't on that trip, but my kid was not allowed on the plane. Uh, because people said he's going to be too disruptive. Mm. Can you imagine the emotional uh, state of my wife, you know, going, she couldn't fly. Mm. So the, these kind of things happened, and it still happens, uh, you know, around the world, and it's very upsetting for families. So people stay away. So I felt if I speak as a well-known golfer, people will maybe say, hey, there's a guy, you know, he's like me. He might be famous, but he's just like me. He's got the same problem. And that's, that's come through in a huge way. So um, I feel it's got to be, um, it's got to start being accepted in society. And in certain societies where we st talk about it more, people understand it a bit more. But I think if us normal folks understand the autistic world, they can understand us a little bit, and we can function together. So public uh, places uh, need to understand when we come in. It's a little bit of a different uh, a dynamic when we walk in with an autistic, <laughs> autistic child, you know, because it, it, there's a lot of different energy going on. But it's, um, it's very different for, for people. It's a shock. Hmm. And then they, they realize. My son, for instance, when he walks in, you know, people see, oh, this guy's a little different. But you give him two minutes, and he's got, uh, he's got the person smiling. You know, he's not, you can't understand always exactly where he's going with his verbal, but he's got a smile on his face, and he wants to communicate with you. And um, people, if, if I could, my absolute personal quest would be if we can get the two worlds together where we can understand each other a little bit better so we can function better. That was very, very uh, interesting, as you said. We don't want Ben to take to our world, but we want to share his world, or we want to live in his world. It, it, sound, it, sounds, uh, it sounds beautiful, but it must be difficult. Yes, it is. I mean, um, but as you go along, you know, we've got a lot of experience now. We've really relaxed. Um, we're much more relaxed uh, w with Ben. Uh, we understand him better, so um, w meaning that his routines, you mm -hmm. know, he's got different routines. He's got s certain foods. We took him off, uh, he's, he's on a gluten-free diet, mm -hmm. for instance. Um, you know, those are the first things that the experts say you must, you must do. It helps them uh, uh, with, the, um, with their diet. So he, he lost a little bit of weight, but um, he's a very healthy child. I should eat the way he does. <laughs> 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 Not a lot of sugar in there, you know, gluten-free, you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, so he's a very healthy child, you know, food-wise and uh, dietary. Um, and then he's got his routine, you know, so we fall into his routine. We saw what, what, what makes him mm. tick. I mean, for instance, he wakes up in the mornings almost to about 12 minutes every morning is in the same time frame six o'clock till six twelve <laughs> that's when ben wakes up then uh, he he wakes up i can hear the door on the other side of the house and he comes to our room he opens the door and he closes the door <laughs> that's the that's the wake up call mm. then next door <laughs> is the is the office you guys laugh because you know eh? you're living the same. <laughs> he's got his office and he loves his cartoons. Okay, um, he's got about four iPads around the house. 
Okay. Only four. Only four. Only four. <laughs> Only four. You'll know what I'm saying. He's he's got my telephone. He's probably got your telephone also. When the te when it, uh, the iPad dies, mm -hmm. then he needs somebody's telephone. Mm -hmm. So my wife, my my daughter, the telephone's got to be ready. But any case, but his morning routine, he goes to the office after opening and closing our door to wake us up. Then my wife gets up, gets his. Uh, his food ready. Not you. No, Go no. On, <laughs> because, um, you know, she started it, so now mm. she's in the routine. <laughs> okay, perfect. Must be. Must be, the sa must be the same all the day. Exactly. When mm. I try, no, 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 no. Where's mom? Where's mom? It's like, no, I'll do breakfast. No, mm. no, no. Mom. Mm. So mm. mom does it now. Mm. So she started. Anyway, um, so he gets going with his computer. Um, and God forbid if the power fails. When there's a power failure in Florida, either weather-wise or then there's big problems. That's why you got to have iPads ready. Mm -hmm. Because when power fails, he can't watch YouTube. He loves the YouTube videos. Um, traveling with myself, we were on very different aircrafts. We took videos of airplanes taking off. Mm -hmm. Big mistake. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. one of his things, he loves to watch airplanes take off. Luckily, we live near an airport, um, you know, so we do that. But after he's had breakfast in the morning, 7.20, we got to get him ready for school. 7.30, out of the house, in the car, off to school. 7.45, he gets to school. As we pull into school, you know, the teacher is there already, open the door, and he runs out of the car with a smile on his face, with his backpack on into school. Um, we've got primary school and high school, as I said. He's out of primary school, he's in high school now. We even got lockers for them. So we try and make it as authentic as possible as a normal school. So they got their lockers and all of that stuff. Um, and then, you know, his school day starts. And it's all different activities every, each and every day. But mm -hmm. he comes back from school in the afternoon. Um, he might have activities, he might have soccer, he might have, oh, sorry, football, he might have uh, golf, he might have tennis, they play, even play basketball, but it's all relative. It's not, nothing expert stuff, it's just to get them out of with course. his friends mm. to, um, to do activity. He comes back and, um, and then he either spends time with me or in front of his computer mm. and mm. Uh, you know, off he okay. goes. But it's, it's very systematic you know, keep him happy with his, his routine and we fill in around him. So it's, uh, it's quite complex, but it's, it's fun. Let's share the experience, Kateřino. Uh, když, tady byla řeč, když tady byla řeč o tom, uh, že se o autismu má mluvit, tak to je konec konců v názvu vašeho nadačního fondu, takže jak moc důležité to je podle vás a uh, jak moc málo se o autismu třeba v Česku ještě mluví podle vás? Uh, já si myslím, že to je velmi, velmi důležité. Uh, je to jeden vlastně z takových jako stěžení v cílu našeho fondu mluvit o autismu. Myslím si, že to téma uh, se stává čím dál tím větším. Erny totiž říkal, Ale... nebo uh, sdílel tu zkušenost v tom smyslu, že rodiny, které mají tenhle problém, tak spíš jsou někde uh, schované jsou... a raději Přesně. to nechtějí mm, řešit, protože mm, lidé mm. nevědí, co to dítě, jak se to dítě zvláštně Přesně. chová mm. a je to věc, o které se moc nemluví. Je pravda, že když si člověk řekne, co tak vím o autismu, když s tím nemám vlastní zkušenost, přiznám se, že toho moc není. To je naprostá Přiznávám. pravda. Já musím říct, že úplně souhlasím s tím, co pan Ernie Els řekl, že v podstatě většina těch rodin jsou tímhle způsobem distancovány, hmm. protože prostě jejich dítě je jiné, jejich dítě se chová jinak, bojí se jít s ním do nákupního centra, nebo třeba jenom jízda prostě tramvají nebo metrem je pro ně jako uh, opravdu trauma. <laughs> trauma. No jo, jo, jo. Uh, takže si myslím, že je hrozně důležité, aby se právě o tomhle vědělo, že to prostě je normální, prostě aby, aby aby, 
aby v podstatě společnost to tak nějak jako přijímala prostě tak, jak to je a proto my se taky samozřejmě s naším nadačním fondem snažíme o autismu mluvit co nejvíce, snažíme se, aby to šlo co nejvíce vidět a právě třeba tato akce je jednou ze skvělých příležitostí, takže jsem za to moc ráda. Pane řediteli, prosím, vemte si mikrofon, já už mám tenhle. Když vy někam přijdete a řeknete, že jste šéfem řízení letového provozu celé této země, že máte na starosti všechny letové dispečery a pak se rozpovídáte o autismu, co to vyvolává mezi lidmi? Tak já to úplně tak často s tou Jasně, profesí vy, jako vy to nespojujete, ale, ale, ale občas to, občas to spojit ob, musíte. Ob, občas se to stane a myslím si, že ta situace je samozřejmě dneska výrazně lepší. To zase je nutno přiznat. E, ta akceptace společností je na lepší úrovni, než řada z nás zná právě tak, jak to bylo v těch začátcích před 20-30 lety. A já jsem vám mě zaujalo to, co říkal Erný, protože Erný má zkušenosti ze svobodného světa, ale vy jste mluvil o tom, že si pamatujete ten přelom mezi komunismem a svobodou a říkal jste, že tam se to výrazně zlepšilo. Na druhou stranu je vidět, že možná i ve svobodném světě to pořád ještě není takové, takové téma, tak otevřené téma, jak by to mělo nebo mohlo být. Určitě, no. Ten kontrast byl asi nejvíc v tom, co jsem už zmínil. Jo. Tam v té době nebyla ta linie mezi profesionály a v úvozovkách amatéry, rodiči a rodinami, protože profesionály téměř nebyly. Ten komunismus bohužel byl i v tom, že i do tohohle oboru vnášel trošku ideologii, takže my jsme se setkávali s psychiatry, psychologi, kteří opravdu o tom nevěděli téměř nic. Takže v tom je ta situace dneska určitě lepší, ideální samozřejmě není. Jasně. A každá takováhle akce přispívá, jak k tomu k té lepší akceptaci toho, že vůbec autisté mezi námi jsou a tak samozřejmě i k tomu, k té osvětě a k získávání samozřejmě i prostředků k tomu, aby se mohli vzdělávat další odborníci, aby mohli sdílet zkušenosti, to je samozřejmě strašně důležité. Dámy a pánové, využijeme prosím toho, že tady Erny ještě je a že tady ještě pár minut s námi může být a budu velice rád, když se s ním třeba vy podělíte o své zkušenosti nebo když se naopak vy na cokoliv zeptáte. Já poprosím jenom, abychom měli mikrofon. Už se, hlá... vy se hlásíte rovnou, výborně. Tak. Jenom prosím do mikrofonu, je to kvůli tlumočení, ano? ano? Tak. So, uh, Můžete samozřejmě anglicky nebo česky, yeah. je to na vás. I would speak English. So, hi, Ernie. The question uh, will be in English, so you... Yep. Okay, the question will be in English. Really, really happy to see you live, because I was watching you on, on a poster in my office for almost three years, because you were the most popular uh, ambassador of our company. Uh, I am from SAP. So... <laughs> so Uh, I have two questions uh, in terms of borders. We are in our team 70, the, the statistic is really critical. We are on, in our team of 70 people uh, internationally. We are four affected families. It's 70 people, and four affected families. So this is, the statistic is really amazing. Uh, but we are trying to somehow change the mindset of our colleagues and to uh, increase the awareness, etc. So two questions. How the, how the autism have, has changed your personal borders, priorities uh, and everything, and how have you changed the borders of all people around because because I'm I'm pretty sure we are we are in we are influencing the people because we are different yeah <laughs> somehow with the kids so thank you thank you very much for your questions thank you no that, that's um, very interesting that's a uh, very good uh, analysis um, when you have a child with autism um, you already become different yourself um, because your life changes completely. You know, I have young friends on the tour, you know, that's just becoming a family, you know, they're just having their first kids. And I tell them your life's gonna change. But wait till you have a child with autism. <laughs> Then your whole universe changes. Um, and that was um, the case with us, obviously, because like yourself, this man's an uh, air traffic controller. I mean, he's got people's lives in his, in his hands, you know? So you have to really um, split your life with autism and your normal life. You gotta try and stay as normal as you can be and, um, and deal with autism as best you can. In my world, 
um, it was much easier than for this gentleman having people's lives at stake. You know, the pressure doesn't change, you know, from your home life um, to your work life. But in my life as a golfer, it's also a very high-strung job, you know, uh, with concentration and so forth, but at least, you know, no lives depend on me, you know, making a birdie or not, you know, it's just myself. <laughs> um, so the pressure is there. Um, and I see that in, in normal families, I want to speak, not in a sporting sense. And, um, and the, the pressure gets so enormous because in a lot of instances, both parties have to work, the man and the wife. And that child with autism needs a lot of attention, especially the early years until if there's a school or if there's a, a place where that child can go for a couple of hours. So it's very, very intense um, work, you know, with that child and, and on the family. Um, so I see a lot of families struggle with that, as you've experienced yourself, unfortunately. Um, and, and it's a very, very difficult situation. Until you find your groove with your child, it can be very, very strenuous on, on the relationship and on the family. To break the borders down, um, I think talking about it and sharing your, your, yourself, your, your family, which is very, very difficult because in certain societies, it's, 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 uh, it's very private. And I see that around the world. I see that in South Africa. I see that in the Middle East. I see that in Asia. I see that in many, many, many countries where people just are not, they're too afraid to, to talk about it or, you know, to let go in, in certain sense because how do you get accepted in society? But the more we can, we can talk about it, communicate about it, the more normal it will uh, become. And that's been our mission in the U.S. In the U.S., thankfully, again, we were very lucky because they, you know, people accept things a little bit differently than other societies. And we've had a, a much easier um, road to talk about our situation. And because of my position as a golfer in the U.S., where people kind of um, recognize me, for me to talk about it, I felt that other people were like, okay, I'm going to talk about it. And so the, the whole thing builds, uh, builds up where, you know, it's more accepted. You talk about SAP. I've been with SAP for 15 years. SAP was one of the first companies to employ uh, people with autism mm -hmm. into, their, into their business. Because a lot of, as you know, the, a lot of the autistic people are so good in certain uh, sectors of life and especially in numbers, you know. So they've employed these, these guys um, to work on some of their, uh, on some of their uh, formulas, some of their uh, uh, work in SAP. And I think they've employed over 100 people from the autistic sector. So these things are starting to happen, not only in, in business, but in, in our life. We create jobs for the kids in our community, in the shopping malls, in the grocery store, at the golf courses, and so forth. So we get the community to interact with uh, autism, and in years to come, it could become the normal. Okay. Thank you. Uh, maybe one or two more questions. Ještě tak jedna, dvě otázky, jestli, jestli budou někde, prosím. Vydržte, až vás bude mikrofon, bez něj to nejde, protože to... Já bych se chtěl zeptat pana Ernie Else. Please, take uh, earphones, please. Ernie. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. Don't worry. I would like to... Můžeme. Česky, chtěl prosím. bych se zeptat pana Ernie Else, zda cítí, že jeho syn ho něčím obohatil, zda mu to nějak pomohlo v osobnostním růstu a zda to považuje za pozitivní událost ve svém životě, tady tu zkušenost a v jakém smyslu. Děkuji. Uh, without a question, uh, 
Absolutely. My, uh, my son was, uh, I call him the angel. You know, at first you, you're frightened, you, you think you, you're cursed by something, by somebody. You know, why, why us, why me? Um, and now, looking back, I cannot imagine our son Ben being any different than what he is. Um, I cannot wait to get home. I can't wait to spend time with him. Um, you know, at first it was tough to bond, you know, the, the father-son bond. Um, you know, obviously, like, all of, like a lot of people... You know, I'm a big sports lover. I wanted to play f football with him, rugby, cricket, uh, golf with him. Um, those things, he's not very athletic, <laughs> but he tries, you know. Um, he loves coming to the golf with me now, but the, the bonding was, was tough because I spent so much time away from home. Um, you know, between my daughter, you know, I could speak to her on the telephone or FaceTime, with Ben, he would not make eye contact or physical contact with me for for many many years, so that that was quite tough for me personally. You know, I, I think he was fine, but today we like this. You know, we uh, we've got a great uh, feel for each other, and um, just it, it's just amazing. I was just with them this weekend in South Africa, um, as I say, my. My wife and daughter are coming here, but he's staying in South Africa. He doesn't like to travel too much. Um, but we FaceTime every day, so I make sure I make the time, the exact time. <laughs> you know, if it's 9 o'clock, it's 9 o'clock. So you've got to be on time for him uh, because he's busy. You know, he's got other things to do. Um, so it's just amazing. I mean, my life right now... I couldn't imagine it without Ben. Uh, it's been amazing. And that's what I try and tell uh, people that have autistic kids when they're young. You know, I've got a, a friend. He was in the Special Forces in the U.S. Um, so he would go on missions for three, four months at a time, come back. Can you imagine pressure? You know, you think you've got pressure. <laughs> you know, you've got guys, you know, doing that kind of job. Then comes home and then you've got to deal with trying to bond with his son and um, giving him a lot of advice and so on through the years. His son is 11 years old now, like yours, and they're starting to bond now. You know, I just told him, you've got to just keep, you got to keep digging away, keep working on the relationship. And when they, they, when they catch you, they don't let you go. And that's, that's what you want. And these kids are, they are absolute sent from heaven. They're great, great people. Thank you very much for your answer. Ještě nějaká otázka z publika nebo připomínka? Tak jedna, dva, tak ještě dvě. Two last, OK? Yeah, it's, it's OK. It's okay. I, I just, fine, thank you very much. <laughs> tak prosím. Jenom u vás musí být mikrofon, je to kvůli tlumočení. Prosím, vydržte trpělivě. Děkuji pěkně, prosím. Uh, please, would you... In English. No, in English. It's, it's in English. <laughs> okay. OK. Does your son have friends that you consider friends are they i suppose all of them autistic does he have any contact or any family members that develop a kind of friendship with him being neurotypical that would be the question thank you what a question yeah very good question um yes he has both both ends um Obviously, growing up, as a, his sister's a bit older than him, so growing up, she brings friends to the house, you know, you know, um, and they'll play in the in the pool or they'll be in the house. So Ben, when he was really young, I pushed Samantha and her friends towards him to go and get themselves familiar with Ben, you know, and Samantha. Luckily, she's got a very nice personality. She's very bubbly. She's up. So she would bring her friends around, Ben. And at first, Ben was uh, a little bit uh, shy. But when he saw, he got a smile on their faces, you know. 
then he would start interact with Samantha and her friends. By the time, um, after a couple of months, a year or so, these friends would come home to come and visit Ben, you know? And today, as I said, my daughter is 20, her friends are 20, and whenever we come to England, that whole bunch of friends still come to Ben to come and visit Ben. We go around the world, you know, we hop around the world, Florida, South Africa, UK. He has friends all over uh, because of the young days. Um, and he even makes new friends. You know, like in South Africa, we go for our, our, your winter breaks, our summer break. December is summer in South Africa, so we're on the beach. So we're on the beach, people come. When they see Ben, he's like a celebrity. <laughs> They come towards Ben because they want to come say hello to Ben. And as these people grow, they bring new, their friends. Oh, you've got to come meet Ben. So his friendship with people has grown around the world. You know, not only in South Africa, but in England. Because we invite people to the house. Friends. They meet Ben. And then they bring their friends. So the friendship keeps growing. Um, but at school, he has his friends, so he always talks about uh, Jake or, uh, or John or these he, the guys that's in class with him. Uh, those autistic friends are, are really close friends to, the, to, to him. He always, when we go away, he gets sad because he wants to be at school, because he wants to be with Jake. So the activities that they do, either golf or athletics or tennis, they do it with their autistic friends. And those are, I think that's his real friends. It's really close to him. But he's friends with us as normal people also. <laughs> Thank you. A uh, tam byla nějaká otázka, jenom zase vydržte, prosím, až vás bude mikrofon. Anglicky nebo česky? Česky. 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 Není problém. Uh, mě by zajímalo, jakou máte vizi s vašima aktivitama, kam byste si přál, aby se rozvíjeli, ať už vaše škola nebo cokoliv dalšího, co v tom tématu děláte. Yeah, it's the school is uh, is ever evolving school. Um, it's almost we very selfish because we watch our son and we go, what's the next step? Because <laughs> um, you know we started the school for for kids from three to twenty one. Um, ben is seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> um, ben started in the school when he was uh, when he was eight. Um, So now he, he's 17, 21's coming on soon. We are starting an adult services um, program as our next uh, project. We find that kids were, who are very severe in autism can't get into normal society. As I said, we create jobs um, around the community in Florida. Um, at the safe way, you know, the grocery store or the golf club or... Um, Uh, even at the, the fuel station, petrol station, for these kids to, and they, they love their jobs around the community, but there's going to be a bigger amount of, of kids coming through, so we need to organize something for them to do uh, where they can't do it in, in, uh, in normal life. So we're going to start an adult services uh, wing on our facility where we can create jobs, they can... Uh, arts and crafts, they, you know, we're going to create things for them to do to keep them busy um, for years to come. And maybe, you know, integrate that into the society in our, in our community. We really want to, our goal is to integrate our community with autism um, so we can work together, live together, uh, you know, in harmony. You know, the restaurants, for instance, around our community, a lot of our kids work in, in the restaurants and, and, uh, and they love what they do. So these things are ever evolving um, and we've got people around the, the country working with us to, to see what we can do um, further uh, for them for, in, in the workspace. Máme li tedy ještě nějakou, řekněme, poslední otázku? Pokud v sále žádnou nevidím... Tak mi dovolte, abych vám všem poděkoval a my máme, my máme připravenou takovou záležitost tady, 
and got prepared a small check for Autalk. Annie, would you be so kind and uh, give this check to, to Katerina? It's, uh, it's more than 10,000 US dollars, so I think it's not, it's not so bad. Prosím, Ernie, mu dejte, jo? Tak. So. Uh, Děkuji všem, uh, let, me, let me thank all the, all the partners and sponsors. Děkuji všem partnerům a sponzorům, protože to je samozřejmě jejich výtěžek. And we've got also some small, uh, small gift uh, for Ernie. Would you explain it, please? Just take the microphone and explain what's that. This is from a young guy. We supported him as a company 10 years ago. Uh, he is the, at the time he was a uh, young boy, but now he's studying for being artist uh, in this field. And uh, we would like to give you as a present from, from him. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Well, let me just, let me just briefly conclude. Uh, my eight years old son asked me, what, what are you going to do uh, tomorrow uh, morning, uh, that? And I, I told him that it's a... It's a um, a seminar with a very, very famous golf player with autistic kid, and my, my son asked me, but he will not speak about the autism. It's not, it's not good to speak publicly. I said, no, I think he will. So I will, I will say to my eight years old son that it's very important uh, to speak about everything and to be very open. This is, this is what I have, I have taught today. Uh, Ernie, thank you very much uh, for sharing your experiences. Thank you very much for joining this, uh, this event, and thank you very much for being here. Thanks. Thanks a lot. And Good, good play in Czechia. Thank you very much. Děkuji, dámy a pánové. Děkuji.